Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I've been at this increasingly ironically named Game From Scratch thing for a very long time. And during that time, I've been asked the same question over and over and over. What game engine should I start with? It's a very good question, especially when you are an absolute beginner. And there's three game engines that probably come to mind right away. If you've heard of any engines, it's probably one of these three. The first one is the Unity game engine. This is the most popular game engine out there. The most people use it. The most games have been made using it. You can start with it completely for free. Uh, and you can make up to something like a quarter of a million dollars before you really need to start paying money. The next up is a triple A game engine called Unreal Engine. This is the powering things like Fortnite, like um, Mortal Kombat, a ton of games uh, you've probably heard of. You can see a number of them scrolling by as we talk right now. If it's not an in-house game engine and it's a triple A game, it was probably made using Unreal Engine. And then the last one is the Godot game engine. This is the most popular open source option out there. So this one is free to use forever and you have access to all of the source code and you can do what you like with it. It's also probably and arguably the easiest to learn of the three engines I just mentioned. And I wouldn't recommend starting with any of them. Now, I'd recommend using all of them, but I would not recommend starting with any of them. So where would I start if I was looking for my first game engine? If I wanted to learn how to create games, what game engine do I recommend people use? And that is this, Microsoft Make Code Arcade. Now, this is just one suggestion. I have a few more coming later on, but this one is a typical of everything I'd like to see in a game engine for beginners. And again, it's very colorful. It looks like it's aimed at children, and to a degree, it definitely is. Is. And it's got a ton of learning material here, but there are a couple of reasons why I definitely suggest this guy. And by the way, if you start off with something like this, you can start with it and then later on move to a different game engine. That's the key thing here. You're not going to be using this forever. You're going to be using this for a weekend and you will learn a hell of a lot during that weekend. So here you can see how you make your games. You can test your games and run them on this little Game Boy game virtualized thing right there anytime you want. By the way, this is running entirely in your browser. Just go to arcade.makecode.com. It is completely and utterly free to work with. So why do I recommend this? Well, number one, all of the tools, all of the asset, everything you need is here. Also, there is a very nice introductory programming option here. What you're noticing here is you have these blocks these ways of programming your game logic. So right here, this is your initialization code. This is where your game starts. This is one of those things you are going to have to learn when it comes to games. Every game engine, it's got this in some way, shape or form. You have a program life cycle. So a program starts, a program updates, a program ends. And you use these like handy bricks to handle those various different things. So this, for example, is called at the very beginning when you first create your game. This here is something that you will call a game loop. This is called every frame or every update of your game. And this is where your game logic happens. And in here, you're doing things like handling input. This is something you're going to have to do eventually in any game engine out there. But this is making your learning curve super, super easy. And it got a ton of learning materials to get you up and going. And then on top of that, you got all of these various different assets to go ahead and play with. So you've got, uh, these are the assets used in this game. So for example, here you can see levels that are being used. And then you have this guy. This is a tile-based level editor that is built directly in here. So you can drag and drop and create your game basically just painting in the world and editing and done. That's all, all that's everything you need. All of the art assets are here. You need to create your own tile or graphic or sprite. You can create it directly inside of here using their tools, or you can go ahead and use their gallery and bring in a ton of stuff from the community. This is really useful because you don't need to worry about sourcing all of this stuff. It's just available for you. All of the tools you need are right here to be successful creating your game. Now, another thing that I really like about this, this visual programming language, this block system, it's a great interface. Introduction. So you can see here, set hero to this drawing of kind player. It's, it's an introductory level of programming. It's a nice approach. And you're literally just dragging and dropping in these various different bricks. And if something fits inside of something else, it's right which is very cool. So all you have to do, you can you know, kind of learn things by just experimenting until something works right for you. And on top of that, I've actually done a tutorial that will get you up and going with something like Make Code Arcade. I did a half an hour tutorial where we create like Miss Pac-Man. So you want to go ahead, check that out. It's a great way to start. And the nice thing here is this is literally, once again, this isn't what I recommend you do forever. This is what I recommend you do this weekend. And then by Monday, you'll be ready to use one of those other three game engines out there. And you will have learned a lot more than you realize. But the cool thing with Make Code Arcade is if you want to switch from blocks to another programming language, you'll notice here you could switch to JavaScript or Python. And what it's going to do is translate all of these blocks into code. So if you want to learn coding slowly, you can learn it this way. 
So this guy can work with code. So you could write your game's code using JavaScript or with Python, or you can use that blocks-based approach. So this got a nice runway. If you want to start learning how to code things, that is why I very much like Make Code Arcade. Plus again, it has all of these tutorials and such to get you up and going, uh, has all the tooling you need to get up and going as well. But it is not the only option out there by any means. But what I like about it is, it reinforces success. You're going to be creating games in minutes, not days or weeks or months. And that learning curve is there, but you are learning things that are invaluable all the way up to stuff that AAA game developers need to know. You need to know the life cycle of a program. You need to know how uh, frames are, how a game loop works, how input is handled and so on. And this teaches you that in a very um, friendly manner. If you're creating 2D games, you're going to need to learn what a tile map is, how these sprites are drawn, what a sprite is, and so on. And this makes it all very nicely, easily to learn. But it's not the only option, of course. We have other options out there. So for example, we have GDevelop. This is uh, another free option. Uh, it is a great choice. You can download this for Windows, Mac, or Linux uh, and run it that way. Or you can even run this guy entirely inside of your browser as well. So you can see here, we'll go over to build and you can see they've got a number of templates to get up and going. So let's say you want to create a, a Tappy Bird style game or uh, a 3D tile builder. No, no, that's too complex. We'll, we'll switch away from that. We'll go with Tappy Birds. So we say here, go ahead and create it. You can open it up We create a copy of it and we'll run this directly inside of the editor right here. Again, you can down this guy locally if you so wish to do. But here you can see, this is once again, the same setup. You've got this, you build your game here. You got uh, drag and drop, bring things in. So if I need a plane, I can bring a plane in here like this. But if I need to add a new object, you have integration into their entire store of characters. Uh, and there's a ton of things that you can do here and then easily bring them in and then have them to work with. So there, we just brought a character in, super simple, all the tools you need, all of the stuff you need here. Now, this guy works a little bit differently in the programming. It doesn't use that blocks approach and it doesn't use code. It instead uses this event system uh, where you're basically, think of this as cause and effect. So at the beginning of the scene, show this, do this, do that. When start is clicked, do this, do that, do this. It's a very clean and straightforward programming mechanism and you're still learning how to code. It's just you're, you kind of have this nice guided approach to it. So that's what makes uh, both GDevelop and Make Code Arcade very uh, nice to get started with. They're very simple in the way that they work, but they encourage kind of experimentation and you can get things going very fast. Now, if you're more of a programmer side of things and you're not really that interested uh, in this approach, you want to learn more, you want to learn game development for to learn coding, for example, I have a couple suggestions there as well. The first one would be a program called Raylib. Now this is a C framework, but the cool thing here is if you go ahead and download it. It comes with all the tooling you need. It comes with a C compiler, a code editor, the library, everything pre-configured. You just have to press, I think it's the F5 key and run your examples. And the cool thing also is there are a ton of examples to get you up and going. And it's pretty simple. So basically the entire documentation is this one big cheat sheet, but you're going to still need to know the basics of C. Uh, so that is one thing you're going to want to be aware of when it comes to Raylib. Uh, on top of that, the cool thing about Raylib, there is actually language bindings for a ton of different programming languages. So if you're working with one of these languages, like you're working with Python or Go or C Sharp or whatever, you can use Raylib with those as well. It's a little bit more complicated to get up and going, but it's again, a super simple, if you're more into the code side of things, here you're gonna have to come up with your own art, your own tools for creating levels and all that. So it's definitely more complexity, but if you're just trying to do something simple, like say Pong, and you're doing it with entirely with code, Raylib is a great suggestion in that regard. And then the other one that I suggest quite commonly is a framework called Love. This uses the Lua programming language. This used to be my go-to recommendation for people looking for their first uh, game development programming language. Uh, and I actually did a full tutorial which teaches you both Lua and how to use the Love framework. Uh, and you'll see the code is very simple. So you want to draw text on screen, that's it. You call the draw function and inside of it, you call love.graphics.print and then uh, what you want to print and where you want to print it in terms of coordinates. So again, there is still a lot to learn packed in here. This is why you're going to have to learn all of this and a thousand other things if you go ahead and pick one of these other options. So if you go ahead and you pick the Unity game engine, you need to learn Unity first. You need to learn the C-sharp programming language. You need to learn how to import assets and you need to learn all of the things about making games. And then we get into Unreal Engine. Here you're going to have to learn way more as well as blueprints, an entire application. This is again, it's probably gonna take you 
three or four months just to get up and going with the tooling and the basics of programming as an absolute beginner. And I think that's probably being a little optimistic. And again, the Godot game engine is another great option here. Uh, probably, again, my opinion, the easiest to use of the options here. But when you compare it to the other things that I presented here, things like Microsoft Make Code Arcade, you will learn more and you will have more success in your first hour of using Make Code Arcade than you would in your first week of using the Godot game engine. And the cool thing here is spend a weekend, just spend a weekend, make some games, have some fun, and you are learning a lot of really handy skills, which you can then apply to or learning the Godot game engine. Unreal Game Engine or the Unity Game Engine, uh, but you've had a lot of fun doing it and you had a lot of success and success rewards more success. It's the fundamentals of learning. So when people say, what game engine should I start with? As an absolute beginner, I would highly recommend something like Make Code Arcade or GDevelop. But let me know what you think. If you started with something different and you have a different opinion here, let me know in the comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.